Welcome back to Doc Jones Garage, everyone. Last episode, we finished the cleaning and began the reassembly of this carburetor. This episode, we're going to finish the reassembly, plus I have a couple of bonus things to show you at the end, so be sure to stick around for that. So I realized after the fact that I hadn't included any footage of me installing any of the components that are under the float bowls. So here I am uh, installing and checking the float bowl height on carburetor number four. For me, I found this was one of the major benefits of the docking plate to be able to set the carburetors at the perfect angle for measuring. Then once I was done setting the float height, being able to switch it back to horizontal so that you could install the bowls with the gaskets easier too was nice. Now I'm in the process of setting up all the fuel and vent lines for carburetor number four. Whenever you're installing any O-rings, you want to make sure that you don't twist them when you're installing them. And in this uh, case here, we want to put a little bit of O-ring lube in just to make sure that uh, the installation goes smoothly. So that spot there is where we have to install the vent line. We're not using any clips or anything for those tubes because they're already quite tight and it's just a vent line. So of course I've kept all the old rubber lines until I had the new ones. Make sure to cut everything to the proper length. You don't have to worry about that when you're doing the installation. Here you can see I'm uh, reinstalling the felt wiper ring on carburetor number four. I didn't realize that there was felt uh, wipers in there when I was disassembling it and they kind of got distorted a little bit. So here you can see me just slowly trying to convince it back into shape and using a little bit of oil to help hold it in place. So leading up to the disassembly, I hadn't seen any information about felt wiper rings anywhere, but after I had them out and once I started doing a little digging around, I did find one person that was making them and selling them, but I figured mine weren't uh, that badly damaged so I managed to salvage them. As you saw we put a little bit of lube on the end of the throttle shaft to not damage that felt and you can see number four now is coupled to the carburetor assembly. I'm making some of the final fuel connections and I'm just making sure that everything is comfortably bolted together and nothing is under any unnecessary strain. Now I'm going to repeat the process for the number one carburetor and that includes the uh, installation of the felt ring as well. So now you can see here they're all together, bolted back onto the docking plate, and I'm getting ready to make the final connection between the carburetor slides and the throttle linkage. So I'm loosely lining up the bolts to make the final connection and then just taking a little bit of the spring tension off the shaft so that we don't damage the threads. Then I just repeat it for the other side. There you can see me actuating all four carburetors with the throttle for the first time since I disassembled it. Now we can finally bolt on those polished carb tops. And we'll get to see what those look like all together. I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to take this carburetor apart again. It turns out that the carburetor kit that I got was not really great and I had to reuse a couple of parts. The slide needles being one of them, the ones that came in the kit were just the wrong size. I inspected the old ones and I cleaned them and I couldn't see anything wrong with them, but we will end up replacing them at some point. Here we can see, we'll do a little flyby, we can see all the carb tops on, everything is clean. The uh, rear stay bolts are still an issue, but I'm going to deal with those and I have two choke plates left to put on. We need to install the diaphragm pump on carburetor number two. So here you see we're taking the float bowl off. I'm just making sure that the uh, shaft for that diaphragm pump is lubricated. And there's a small bellow type seal that goes in there as well. It's all serviceable, not as pliable as I would like, but I, I think it'll be okay for this initial start, hopefully. Again, you can see me pivot that docking plate horizontal so that I can reinstall the float bowl without the uh, seal moving on me. So let's finish the installation of this fuel pump and put that spring back in place and 
get that cover bolted on. So now we're going to turn our attention to the uh, the choke plates there, and uh, I'm just starting to check them, make sure everything's moving freely. As you can see there, it's not moving very freely, and uh, making sure there's nothing binding. I found that the docking plate actually was twisting the carburetor set up a little bit so I've removed it from the docking plate and you can see now things are moving a lot better and I'm installing the last couple uh, throttle plates and I'm also loosening off the other plates and just sort of finalizing the position for all of those just to make sure everything is moving smoothly. I found that it still wasn't perfectly straight so here now I'm installing the uh, front stay plate or the main plate and I have stainless bolts for those so we'll get those all installed here I'm working my way from the middle out the plate uh, you know locates the carburetors pretty decently with that top pin and the bolts, there's not a whole lot of play there. So once you get everything kind of tightened down, everything sits pretty much where it needs to be, it seems. So you can see I'm kind of easing the carburetors back into that plate. Those pins are pretty tight and I don't want to twist anything or snap one of those um, locating tabs off. That part is cast, so it doesn't really take a lot of flexing before it cracks. <clears throat> here I'm going to uh, so let's install the uh, mixture screws it's the tiniest little bit of oil on those o-rings just so we don't get anything binding up when we're threading those in and then I just um, then we just wheel them all the way down, back them out. Uh, I think I backed them out one and a half turns just as a starting point. The carburetor kit did come with new caps for the, the ports that you attach your uh, carburetor sinking tool to. So just slap those in there. And now the bowl drain screws. which I hope they don't leak because the new set didn't have any new O-rings and the uh, as you can see there they're a little dry and just tried to soak them in oil where like just dab some oil on them and cross my fingers so here we have it those rusty rear stay bolts like I said I'm gonna deal with those but uh, other than that it looks pretty good. I'm gonna call this my good enough for now level. There's still some things on there that are bothering me, but this is just to get it started. So here we have, uh, I ordered a bunch of parts from four into one and uh, that's where I got my fuel lines and such from. So let's just have a look at some of the stuff. I got a couple of kits like a I think it's like a tune-up kit that came up with some stuff and a cable kit so and it had all the cables so you see the choke cable I think that's probably the uh, tachometer cable yeah and uh, the push-pull cables for the throttle all of it There's... the packaging was pretty good you can see there now I got uh, spark plugs that's for the tune-up kit oh I got some replacement um, rubbers for holding the fuel tank in the front and you know oil oil filter uh, you know new o-rings so all this all the good stuff all the stuff you need to uh, bring a bike back from the brink so there we've got some fresh points And of course, air filter. We'll be uh, probably having a look at that 
airbox pretty soon. There was some parts there that needed to be taken off and cleaned up and put back on. I like the invoice, like the packing slip that they sent. It has a picture of everything in there. It's very detailed. It's really nice. Just to make sure that I had everything, keep everything organized, and help my memory out as much as possible. So here's the screwdriver that I ended up getting. Now it's it's kind of on the small side, uh, but I didn't think that I was going to be using, you know, like a handheld screwdriver to be undoing any of the really hard to get off um, fasteners, which I'm sure there's going to be plenty of, but this is really more to help me with reassembling stuff. They were really magnetic. I'm not sure if that was on purpose or, or what, but uh, we'll see. That, that can be good and bad sometimes. And uh, yeah, the packaging was kind of interesting. Now, you're gonna see here, the only thing that I didn't like so much about this on initial inspection, because I haven't even used it at this point, is that um, sticker, or it's painted on, on the end of the screwdriver, makes it look like there's a striking plate there. Not that you wouldn't, you would wanna be hammering on a small screwdriver like that but I mean it's nice to have the option I guess if you really needed to but uh, it's not meant for that which is probably a good thing let's have a look at all the different sizes that it comes with so we have uh, number one and number three GIS on one of the attachments and I think the, uh, here we go, the other one has a number six flat and a number two. And then the other one is kind of an unusual one. It's, uh, I haven't quite figured that one out yet. I didn't need that one. But you can see these are the bolts that hold the mainstay on, or hold the carburetors to the mainstay and it, there's no gaps in there. Like, I, I, the difference is, uh, well, you're gonna see here. So, they have like a regular Phillips head screwdriver. That's kind of a larger Phillips head that I was using because it fits not too bad. You can see there's still a little bit of movement, but those ones do not move. They are definitely made for those, and you can see, like they're they're tight. Like I'm having to. So I mean, you can definitely see the difference uh, between the two. That's the one that I was using to um, break some of those bolts. The tighter ones break them free, and then I was just using regular screwdrivers after that. But this one here is very tight. Look at that. I mean, it's you don't have to worry about it falling off or anything. So that's why I went with these ones because I can also put that in an impact if I needed to, and then also I can attach it to an extension if I need to reach in somewhere. And I can't do that with a, just a regular screwdriver, a regular JS screwdriver. So you'd have to get one that was really long. And then, you know, the grip feels good. It uh, so far so good. I mean, we'll see. So that's going to do it for the carburetor series. Uh, thanks again for watching. Hopefully it wasn't too boring. I'm trying to be somewhat informative. If you're excited as I am to see this thing running, why not uh, give this video a like? I'm not 100% sure what's next in the uh, video lineup, but it will probably either be carb airbox install or bike startup.